Hey y'all, I am here looking at the MicroSwiss NG Direct Drive Extruder and Hot End installed on my Ender 6. I put this in a couple of weeks ago and have absolutely loved every minute of it since. The performance with PLA is leaps and bounds ahead of what stock was doing. And the PETG and TPU performance that I've gotten is just absolutely amazing. I have a few changes that I've already made and then some further changes to those changes that I need to do. And then also I need to replace this. I had already taken the steps to remove the uh, old extruder. I had actually installed that up top, so that was something I did a while ago. Um, there's not much to that. You know, just take off the old one and uh, basically use it as a paperweight or set it aside in case of an emergency. Um, then a filament guide up there, kind of a conduit block there. Everything comes in here. There's a little bit of harnessing uh, for the motor there, and all the rest of it is just stock harnessing. So this adapter, you could fish it through the conduit if you want. I plan on changing out for a cable chain before too long, so I just kind of zipped it up along the way there. Um, in addition to that, I have already added a 5015 motor fan to this. The stock fan that moves over when you install the NG already has a huge advantage over the stock cooling on the old hot end because you've got the two angles for the airflow so that was already great I just wanted to add the 5015 so I could push my PLA speeds a little bit higher which I've been able to do and then I also installed a CR touch um, Again, not necessary. The Ender 6 itself, uh, Creality, when you buy those kits, doesn't even include a bracket that fits on the original hot end. Um, and Micro Swiss has a few available, but the other kits, uh, you know, for the Ender 3 and things like that, but they don't have one for the Ender 6. And another interesting part about this. As unlike the other Creality kits that MicroSwiss sells, this process doesn't involve removing the V-slot wheels. Um, there is an adapter plate that goes on over top of the existing plate. So this is different. I know there are videos out there for the NG install on some other Ender units, uh, but none of them really show this variation of it, so I thought it was a good chance to show off what's under there and uh, make my upgrades and just kind of give my feedback on, on how this thing has been performing. Right. Before I go tearing down and installing and getting into the good stuff, I thought I would just show some of the things that I'd already printed with the NG. Um, I put on a .6 nozzle uh, hardened steel and printed with some of the spaghetti filament that has abrasives in it, so it's kind of cool and sparkly. Um, no problems, no issues there. And then uh, TPU, this was, a, this was a fun one. Almost zero complications or testing, just switched right over to it from PLA. Um, squishy, almost no stringing. I got some issues with the edges there, but I think that's just my slicer settings. Um, this came out great. And then for my actual upgrade pieces, 
Um, I had printed these originally in PLA just to get them installed and see how that whole process went and after a little while longer of using theirs and coming back with some PETG. I've got a replacement CR touch bracket. I've got the uh, conduit pieces that I'm going to be adding to that. And then the uh, 5015 I reprinted with PL PETG to give that a little more pizzazz. And then I've got an ADXL bracket that I'm going to be installing over top of the blower fan when I replace that. You can see here I've got the fan shroud removed. That is just two screws that mount it to the main extruder body. Um, it's a nice printed piece that comes with the kit. I'm guessing it's an ABS or similar. Um, really nice. Did a little bit of cleanup just from some stray stringing on it, but that even probably wasn't necessary. Um, I did have, after a couple hours of use, the hardware holding the hot end fan uh, seemed a little loose and I was getting a lot of rattling out of the front there on larger movements. So I went ahead and tightened that down just a bit further with some different hardware. Um, didn't want to gauge it out too badly, but I think I'll see improvements there. I haven't actually even tried it yet. Again, I've got a 5015 adapter and then I'm going to put here. It's a nice little print I found online. Super simple, super easy. Uh, here you can see the main star of the show. Uh, nice LDO pancake motor. Um, you've got your mechanism here for the filament. I've got it currently dialed back per their instructions. I've got TPU loaded right now. Um, it's super simple, nice moving tensioner there, the heater block and thermistor and all that jazz I had obviously already removed. Um, you take out the old element and you swap that and the thermistor over. Um, super easy, no fuss. And then you have a single set screw that you mount the new heater block with the pre-tightened, pre-torqued uh, nozzle and heat break there. So unlike the Ender 3 and the other Creality kits that you get from Micro Swiss, this unit doesn't actually have the original plate come off. There's an adapter piece that goes on, so you don't remove the V-slot wheels. Um, it's nice. I wasn't expecting it to be like that because the only videos I was able to find were on the other kits. Part of the reason that I wanted to kind of document this anyways. The extruder and hot end itself is extremely light in comparison to this bulky original unit. Obviously that wasn't on the gantry, but you know, just by comparison you can tell craftsmanship and that sort of thing and really tell what it is that you're paying for with this extruder. So take this off, take some measurements, and go from there. Alright, so here we are at the back plate with all the old parts removed. Again, you'll be taking off the original heat sink that mounted there that comes with the heat break and the nozzle. I don't have my nozzle right here. Um, what you're going to need to do is remove your heater cartridge and thermistor from your block. Um, this will be something like this, and there's a small screw that loosens that, and there is
is a set screw that tightens your heater cartridge and you'll just want to lay those off to the side same thing with your fans um, you're gonna be I'm not gonna take this completely apart you're gonna be left with the actual uh, heater cartridge the mister fans and uh, <clears throat> Oh, that's my CR touch harness. Um, that jazz coming out there. Then this will be your original stock fan instead of that 5015. Same deal. Um, you'll remove all of that, kind of set the harnessing to the side. And that's when you can bring in the main star of the show. You've got the extruder. You've got a really nice... Um, LDO pancake motor and this tensioner which is really really nice feeling mechanism um, your nozzle and new heat block will come from micro swiss not attached there's one grub screw there uh, to attach that for the disregard the crud under here the uh, heater cartridge, there are these two screws for the thermistor, and there's just the one small screw there. Uh, and the steps for inserting those, installing those on this, everything here basically is the exact same as any other information you can find on the NG, on any of the other enders. Um, <clears throat> so there's, there's not much to show here that others haven't shown before. Now, my recommendation would be to get your heater block and heat break and nozzle and everything all situated in here after you've gotten your initial fitting of your cartridge and your thermistor on, I think it's gonna gonna be a lot easier. Um, you'll tighten these two down gradually, making sure you're positioned properly. Um, and same thing with the thermistor screw. What you're gonna want to do though is heat up the block and come back and tighten those um, gradually and and making sure things are are seated properly as it's as it's heating up and, and nothing comes loose. Same thing I did with the grub screw for the heat break. I made sure to, to heat things up, tighten that down, kind of double check that there wasn't anything loose after my temperatures changed. Um, again, this is the only additional cabling that comes in with the kit and uh, uh, it just plugs in there and you can deal with the harnessing however you see fit. Um, I had previously fished in this uh, extension for the CR Touch and I ran that through this conduit um, but I'm gonna be redoing all of all of this. Now one thing I would advise uh, given we're not removing the V-slot wheels and anything else to uh, switch over to the NG is go ahead and tighten down uh, the hardware here because it's going to be completely inaccessible. Well, not completely. I think one of them is accessible um, once you put the main extruder body on. Um, and then the... Ender 6 has this plate that comes with it, and this goes like this uh, over top here. You've got two screws that go in, and that's where the main body attaches with the three mounting points. This is all broken down in the documentation for the install. 
So this will go here, and this plate stays. So that's the that's the main difference with this install. Um, for the general install, you'll be reusing the conduit clamp. I went ahead and got some different pieces. I like this one in particular because this mounts uh, either in front or behind, and the part that actually clamps, oh my god, upside down, the part that actually clamps the conduit uh, goes in a higher position, and the tensioner and uh, filament guide, they get a little tight with the stock, uh, um, with the stock conduit clamp, so this actually has the benefit of raising it up and away from that arm a little bit more uh, to make things a little bit easier. So, anyways, there's the uh, there's the breakdown of that. Um, in addition, with the 5015 fan on mine, um, the uh, Y stop switch no longer fit behind the fan there. Um, so I ended up pulling the cable back and relocating it over here. Um, now because I have the CR touch, I was able to steal the mounting plate from the Z stop switch to be able to create a little janky setup there. Um, I've got to gotta print something for that more permanently and then I'll replace my Z-stop switch just as a fallback. Um, again, just tighten everything up. Make sure your belts, uh, if you center your, your uh, plate, you can get a, a pretty good feel, an even distribution of tension across the two sides. So I'm going to go through and put all these pieces back on and uh, go from there. Um, as you can see, everything's nice and tight. Um, a lot less noisy than the normal extruder. I've got a bit of Z-hop going on, um, but nothing too crazy. And uh, it's just a nice, solid piece that moves very smoothly and uh, pretty quietly in comparison to the regular stock setup. Um, I'm going to do some input shaping, tuning on it. I'm running at 120 millimeters per second for perimeters right now and have everything else kind of broken down from there. These are speeds I know are attainable uh, for quality purposes, um, but I fully expect I can push this a little bit further, especially with the .6 nozzle. Um, other than that, you know, I, I don't plan to try and do a speed boat race, you know, super fast benji or anything like that. I don't think that this is the extruder for that. It's just good quality, solid prints with uh, consistent results in multiple materials and no fuss and no modifications. Everything I did here uh, was mostly just for fun and just kind of some quality of life stuff. So overall, super great product and uh, well worth the money and super simple install. So I hope that helps. Thanks.